Qualcomm, um, sorry, Snapdragon Summit. It was incredible. And yes, it is true. Dan, we came in early before everybody showed up. We got set up and we had two hats there. We had not only the analyst hat to be analysts and give good advice and also report back on what we saw, but also the 6.5 was there and we did nine interviews with multiple executives, including uh, CEO Cristiano Amon. We did. Number two in control, Alex Katuzian, and many, many more. Links to the show notes, at least on uh, on one of those. But, I mean, where do you start on an event that you pretty much spent uh, the entire uh, week at? So I want to like, give it a little bit of context here. So Qualcomm is a company in transition. It essentially owned, along with um, companies like uh, Facebook and Apple, the mobile transition right? But right now, uh, sorry, the mobile revolution, but it's really now moving from a phone only to the intelligent edge. And whether that's phone, includes phones, by the way, but incrementally adds PCs, cars, XRs, and the internet of things, and not just the uh, human IoT or things like wearables, but also the industrial uh, inter internet of things. This show, the Snapdragon Summit, really focused on the next generation uh, smartphone, which was the Snap uh, Dragon 8 Gen 2, and also the human IoT that include, included things like uh, XR and also um, wearables and, uh, and, and hearables. Uh, it was an incredible show. I mean, um, it, if you recall, we've talked a lot about Qualcomm strategy, uh, pillar number one, with the objective of going after the premium Android, right? Now, it doesn't mean they don't provide uh, a lot of technology and smartphones, uh, smartphone technology to Apple. Uh, they do. In fact, uh, Apple uh, exclusively, exclusively uses modems uh, and part of the front end uh, from Qualcomm. But listen, new year, uh, new time to go after uh, to go after those smartphones, and that's that's exactly what the company did with the new platform. I can safely say, uh, particularly based on the increase in performance in AI, I see no reason why Qualcomm can't uh, continue its leadership in, in premium uh, Android. And it was really interesting, Daniel, how it's not just AI for AI's sake, but it was about AI to improve experiences, whether that was uh, the radio uh, with the modem uh, to find uh, the best thing to connect to, whether that was the compute camera. Uh, but let's not forget things like Wi-Fi 7, dual Bluetooth, heck, um, freaking ray tracing uh, in, uh, in the graphics uh, as well. I don't think that Qualcomm is going to win on all the CPU benchmarks, but quite frankly, when, when we look at experiential benchmarks, uh, I don't see anybody uh, anybody touching the company uh, uh, at all. And, you know, it is funny. I'm always skeptical when a company says, hey, we're focusing on the experience, because uh, automatically what pops into my head is, oh, it means they're going to lose in the tech. Well, this is not the case. Uh, what it took, I would say, Qualcomm four to five years to really make that transition from doing tech for tech's sake to actually uh, focusing on what people do with uh, uh, with their devices. We've got a little bit of a sneak uh, sneak peek also on the PC side, uh, which was which was really good. We saw Adobe CEO, excuse me, uh, Adobe um, executive in charge of alliances get up and essentially say. They're going to keep adding more native applications to um, uh, the Snap, the Snapdragon uh, uh, platform. Um, some people may not know this, but there's already platforms out there. Sorry, already Adobe applications that are 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 native, including uh, including Photoshop. Uh, we saw a brand new XR platform uh, called AR2 Gen One, and I like. I like that a lot, Daniel, because it it really narrows in on the use case of augmented reality with the capabilities to put them in normal size glasses. In fact, the glasses that you have on right now look strikingly similar to the form factor that the uh, AR 
uh, AR2 Gen 1 was uh, delivered in. You know, it's a one watt part, has uh, three uh, co-processors, uh, has uh, Wi-Fi 7, and most of the compute is coming out of the uh, smartphone uh, itself. And I, and I like that model. Um, and I think it will likely accelerate uh, what the industry does with, uh, with, with AR. And I think the timing is good for when I think Apple is, is going to come out. So great show. Um, started on Sunday. You and I left Wednesday night. Uh, both took the red eye back in so we could be in the office for work and plan for this podcast. Yeah, I came home just for this because because I love all of you and uh, you matter in case you forgot. There we go. But, uh, you know, you covered a lot of ground there, Pat. I'll, I'll kind of keep it simple, zoom out and keep us uh, on pace here. But, uh, you know, for, for me, it was really about the future of mobile compute and the imp implementation and application of AI on everything. And so if you kind of thematically looked across the show, um, a lot of energy was spent on how AI is going to really supercharge this next generation of devices, whether it's, uh, you know, how AI could be implemented to the RF modem system to more intelligently deliver uh, millimeter wave 5G uh, beam forming and making sure you're getting that highest quality signal at any given time. Uh, to the way you can use AI to flex across different levels of connectivity between bands, right? Whether it's Wi-Fi 7, whether it's millimeter wave, sub-6, or a legacy um, connectivity that we need when we're outside of major markets and metros. And then, of course, if you look at uh, XR, if you look at um, mobile compute, uh, the, the PC part of the business, if you look at gaming, you know, everything was, hey, how are we going to take artificial intelligence and layer it to add performance? Can we add intelligence that's going to help save power? Can we add intelligence that's going to help make the device work better? And, th and that to me was kind of like if you went right down the line and just kind of said, how do I streamline and digest what we saw over those two days? That was it. It was that yeah. the next generation, the next scale of these companies, products, services, and business is going to be its ability to implement meaningful artificial intelligence on top of high power, high high performance, some of the lowest power um, system on chip that are available in the market today. They got the wins, they've got the partners, they've got Microsoft and Adobe, they've got all the major handset makers, they've got the design wins, they've got the uh, you know Snapdragon compute uh, in beta with some really large customers. They had Citigroup up on the stage talking about this. These are the pieces and parts that are gonna come together to help build the business. And in our time with Cristiano, you have to acknowledge that this diversification strategy and taking every single device that connects to the network and making it accessible and making it a part of the opportunity, the TAM for Qualcomm is what the company is looking at. And I think they're doing a good job. So I'll leave it there. Um, good event. And it was, you know, as I said, working in paradise. Yeah, probably the, the most interesting thing I think we're both you and I drilled in was on their, their PC uh, potential and I think we're in the same place that we feel pretty confident with the part itself. Um, I mean, you know, e even that's taking us, you know, I think a, a stretch, uh, but uh, unclear uh, on the go to market uh, at this point. So I'm going to be interested to see how that uh, pans out. Um, I'm hoping that they're making a list of what they're not going to do uh, as long as uh, what they're going to do, because I think focus is paramount, particularly in getting into a new market.